Hello and welcome to our tutorials. In this discussion, we shall be looking at the introduction to quadratic functions and equations. This presentation is going to consider the behavior of quadratic graphs in relation to the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x, and of course the constant c in a given quadratic function. Before proceed, make sure you click on the subscribe button, like, and share. Now, a function has at least two variables, an output variable and one or more input variables. A quadratic function has one output variable and one input variable. It is of the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c or f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b and c are real numbers but a must never be equal to zero. Now we shall consider the behavior of the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x and of course the constant c and in that illustration you understand why a must never be equal to zero. So let's look at the behavior of these particular values. Now let us look at the behavior of a quadratic graph in relation to the coefficient of x squared which is a, the coefficient of x which is b, and of course the constant c. Okay, as you can see I have some three slides here, we have slide a, slide B, and of course slide C. Okay. Currently, the value of A is 1, and look at how the graph looks like. So we are going to be sliding this particular value to the left and the right, of course, to see how the graph would behave. So when you slide it to your right, what happens? See that the graph is closing up. Okay. You see at a equal to 5, you see that the graph closes up. Okay, I'm using the, the range of values from negative 5 to 5. That is a equal to negative 5 to 5. Okay, now let's slide it to the left. What do you observe about the graph? Okay, now when of course the value of a is 0, what happens? The graph flattens, in other words, it becomes a linear graph. That is why. We always state that in a quadratic graph, a must never be equal to 0. If not, once a is 0, it becomes a linear graph or a linear function. Now, let's keep on sliding towards the left. Now, as you slide, what happens? It curves downwards. And of course, as you slide and the negative value is being increased, what happens? it is closing up downwards. So, what do you observe? Whenever it closes downwards, then we say that the graph has a maximum value, as you can see. The graph has a maximum value when A is a negative number or a negative integer or any other negative number other than integers. Okay? Now, what happens? If you, if you slide it to the right, what happens? Until A becomes positive, the graph begins to close up and of course, it opens up. Okay? At this stage, we say the graph has a minimum value. Okay? As you can see, the minimum value occurs at its lowest point. Okay? And the graph is said to have a minimum value if the coefficient of S squared is positive. As you can see, A is positive here, as you can see here. Now, so when you slide it and A becomes negative, the graph has a maximum value, right? And look at it, the maximum value is the highest point of the graph. As you trace downwards, what happens to the value of Y? The value of Y is decreasing, alright? And as you go, it gets to its highest value, or the highest value of y is obtained at the turning point, at this point you see here. 
do you get that so similarly if you slide it towards the right and then the graph opens up what happens the lowest value is what you find here do you get it because as you slide down the graph begins to what the, the value of y reduces until it reaches its minimum value here and then again as you trace up what happens the value of y increases so at this place you see that the, the, the graph has a minimum value okay let me put back a to be equal to one so that we can look at the behavior of b now here the value of b is one let's slide it to the right and then to the left and see the behavior of the graph now as you slide it to the right what happens the graph shifts towards the left in other words as the value of b becomes positive the graph shifts towards the left okay and again if you if the value of b is becoming smaller and smaller until it becomes negative what happens the graph shift towards the right okay that's pretty much what the b is it's more or less like the graph shifts or a shift right or shift left depending on the value of b now let's look at c c is more or less like something like a vertical translation as you slide the c what happens as you slide it towards the right the graph goes up in other words the higher the value of c the higher the graph also goes along the y-axis then when you slide it towards the left in other words as the value of c decreases the graph translates downwards so that's basically the behavior of the coefficient of x squared the coefficient of x and of course the constant c this is basically how they affect the function from the illustration graphically a quadratic function is a parabola it may either look like this that is when the coefficient of x squared is greater than 0 okay so as a is greater than 0 you are going to have it curving downwards in this case it will have a minimum point it may also look like this but in this case the coefficient of x squared must be negative in other words a must be less than zero that is basically how a quadratic function graphically behaves with respect to the coefficient of x squared the coefficient of x and that of the constant c kindly subscribe to the channel and make sure that you get ready for the sequels on this particular topic quadratic functions and of course its graphs and of course and finally the algebraic ways of handling equations that are quadratic as well